What are Bartolin's glands? Um, they're also known as the greater vestibular glands. They're part of the female external genitalia. So we'll have a look at the normal anatomy on some plastic anatomy models. Uh, we'll talk about their function. And of course, like much of the anatomy in the body, we only really notice them when things go wrong with them. So we'll talk about what can go wrong with them. And um, hang on, greater vestibular glands. Well, where are the lesser vestibular glands? We should point those out as well, right? Uh, Bartolin's glands are greater vestibular glands. So glands of the vestibule. Well, what's the vestibule? Okay, so female pelvis, female external genitalia, skin's been removed, but we can see the labia minora here, the opening of the vagina, the opening of the urethra, the clitoris up here. The vestibule is the area inside, so medial to the labia minora and posterior to the clitoris and so on. So this is the vestibule. So vestibular glands are going to duct into the vestibule and the greater vestibular glands, uh, there are two, one on either side, a left one and a right one, and they are here. So they are kind of like about maybe a centimetre in diameter. They are a little bit lateral and a little bit posterior to the opening of the vagina. This structure we see here is the vestibular bulb. This is erectile tissue. So they're kind of covered by that a little way, but each greater vestibular, vestibular gland is here and here, a little bit posterolateral to the opening of the vagina. Each greater vestibular gland has a single duct and the duct opens next to the opening of the vagina on its kind of like posterior and lateral corner, as it were. So there are two openings. Its job is to secrete mucus. It's a gland secreting mucus. So it's a, um, it's a lubricating solution. Uh, so it lubricates the opening of the vagina. This model shows different layers of dissection. So this is a deeper dissection. Like I say, greater vestibular gland, vestibular bulb. And on this side, we can see a, mu a muscle. The bulbospongiosus muscle is covering over both of those structures. Um, the male pelvis does have um, an analogous structure. The male pelvis has bulbourethral glands, similar sort of size, similar sort of job, slightly different anatomy. Uh, those also get called Cowper's glands. All right, so what goes wrong with this then? Well, because this is a gland with a single duct opening onto skin, there's a possibility that that duct could become blocked. If the duct becomes blocked, then the gland will swell, and this is a Bartholin cyst. So this is when they tend to first get noticed. So a swelling in the location of the greater vestibular gland or the Bartholin's gland would be a Bartholin cyst probably. It may well be asymptomatic. It might not swell very much. It might swell a great deal. It might be mildly painful or mildly uncomfortable, but if it gets infected and then inflamed, it's likely to become incredibly uncomfortable and painful and tender to touch. And um, if pus, so pus is a result of the immune system fighting the infection, if pus collects there inside that space, then it'll become an abscess, which will, yeah, so it'll be really, really painful and uncomfortable. A buildup of pressure within an enclosed space within the body, and we have skin here as well, so lots of nerve endings, inflammation, buildup of pressure as a result of infection or what have you, is going to be really, really sensitive and really, really uncomfortable. Uh, so that's a Bartholin cyst. Um, another cause of a growth here, and of course we're thinking about this is just occurring on one side, not both sides, because we're, we're, we're just thinking that the duct to one gland has been blocked, causing problems with that gland or an infection in just the one gland. So this is happening on one side or the other. But the other thing that could, have caused, could also cause a growth here would be a cancer. Now this is a gland that ducts ex externally, so it has all of those cell types associated with that type of gland and duct. So a number of cancers can form here. But whereas um, a Bartholin cyst forming 
as a result of the duct blockage or inflammation maybe occurs in about two or three in a hundred women in their lifetime, um, a cancer of a greater vestibular gland or Bartholin's gland probably occurs in about one in a million women in their lifetime. So you can see it's far more likely to be a cyst, but if you're a doctor examining this area, you always need to remember the possibility is there, right? So those are the greater vestibular glands or Bartholin's glands. What about the lesser vestibular glands? Lesser vestibular glands, right. So we're still in the vestibule, lesser. These are smaller glands. Uh, they actually do the same job. They also secrete mucus into the vestibule, but you find these between the vaginal opening and the urethral opening, so they're more anterior. Yes, each side has a gland with a duct, so that duct could also become blocked, could also become infected, but the swelling of that gland would be smaller because it's a smaller gland, if that makes sense. So yeah, lesser vestibular glands, uh, they duct between the opening of the urethra, the opening of the vagina, so they're more anterior than the greater vestibular glands, which are larger. There you go. That's the anatomy of the Bartholin's glands or greater vestibular glands and um, why they sometimes come up in clinical conversation. All right, see you next week.